episode three of the drill. Thank you for joining us. Have you ever broken anything? Have you ever broken the, anything? Yes, my collarbone. John Francesa, I know where you live. He, th- I was playing robot, and he tried to destroy me and did. He threw me down right before flag football practice. Before flag football practice. I was six years old. What did you break, Tom? Oh, I also broke a collarbone. Oh, my God. Playing football in uh, freshman and high school. What high school? Hawthorne High School. There you go, the proud. Home of the Beach Boys. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or Quincy Watts. Don't worry, baby. Yeah, Quincy Watts. Uh, or Curtis, Curtis Conway. Conway or, uh, Trying to keep it topical. Something <laughs> close to the uh, 80s or 90s. That's about it. The Cougars, right off the freeway. You see it if you're going to uh, LAX. It's off to the right-hand side. Yeah. Reason, reason bring up something broken. Justin Turner yeah. bust his wrist in a spring training game. Yeah. Doesn't need surgery, but you're just making that face like, that's a huge blow to the Dodgers right now. You know, they probably have more depth than any team in baseball. So they, they can, um, I don't know if overcome it, but they can go with this for a while. And, and they have guys who show up. I think they're talking about putting um, – Logan Forsyth, Logan Forsyth there. third, and moving Kiki Hernandez around and getting everybody in a different position. But it's kind of what they did last year. Yeah, but but I don't know. It seems like the the division, the Giants are going to be better. Uh, the Diamondbacks are going to be better. The Padres, they suck. Um, but damn, I think I think one Jeez. one of the can we get to the end of spring training? It's exactly funny delicious. how people are already talking about that they are going to have to have um, home field advantage. That this is a big deal. Come already, already because the Cubs and the Nationals. It's the middle are so of March. Strong. I know, but the Cubs and Nationals are so strong that the feeling is you want to have every advantage you can have, and the the thinking is they can survive without Turner, but they could drop a few games. That in the end may be a problem, of course. That was no problem for Houston last year. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, yeah, wah, wah. Remember that? No, I don't. Game seven was that no, Dodger I don't. Stadium. And welcome to the drill. What the hell? <laughs> Bethel Duran, <laughs> Tom Hofarth, Steve Lowry, producer Eric, which I just found out he has a sweet nickname. I just found out he was a producer. Yeah. Uh, that, I just that too. Was, yeah. Your nickname is what? Schmeeds. 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 Because? I'm a small medium. <laughs> <laughs> How tall are you? Yes. Five five on a good day. I've uh, only seen you sitting down on that couch. <laughs> so you're five five uh, on a good day. How much do you weigh? Uh, you know when I'm going good, uh, one forties. Oh my! I feel like this has turned into a Tinder date. Is that what's going on? When's the last time you weighed one forty, Tom? Sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Director John, the man from <laughs> Cleveland. You weighed 140 or what, like third grade? Somewhere around there, I'm sure. <laughs> How about since we're all big now, what size are you? What six, size am I? Six five, two forty. No, no, no. I'm uh, six one, like two sixty, somewhere in there. <laughs> Strong, <laughs> Mike. When you got to the city, two sixty. <laughs> Just kind of. Hey, look. I'll stretch <laughs> it where I can. Director, technical <laughs> yeah. advisor, cut out John. The bread. Just cut out the bread and forget, forget the bread. He's behind the scenes. He doesn't need uh, to cut out any bread. You do what you got to do. Wait, you two Batons. travel together, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're going where tonight? BYU. BYU. All right, uh-huh. so they do a lot of work for Pro Angle behind the scenes, and they do, they're do they the jack of all trades. Mm. So when you two are traveling, you get to see Schmeeds, is that, that's the nickname, a oh lot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you oh, stuff yeah. him in the overhead sometimes? No, no, no. He gets his own seat <laughs> Don't and everything. do that. He Bad things it. happen, man. Oh, yeah. I, I wasn't even trying to make that joke. <laughs> <laughs> I was even trying. Trying. I'm just saying. You don't have to crate him. <laughs> 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 this is the drill. We're trying to figure things out. Thank you for guys watching. And <laughs> that should be our motto: the drill. We're trying to figure things. As out. you can tell, we, we got like we got decorations right now. Yeah. Everything is bootleg, so yeah. feel free to enjoy and send us whatever I, you, you guys know, want. You know, I forgot to do one more thing. Send we, it. We established that he is from Ohio, Young, Youngstown, Ohio. Ohio. You know, I picked this up in a used bookstore the other day, and I thought. What do we got? I thought you'd. Oh, <laughs> you like that one? Then Tress said to Troy. Yeah. What is know. it? Actually, I have a buddy. Uh, my roommate will probably but love this. For the uh, podcast listeners, yeah. what's the name of the book? Uh, then Tress said to Troy, right, let me switch cameras so they can actually Troy being book. USC, right? Uh, no, no, <laughs> not <laughs> quite. Not quite. Okay. Our Jim Trestle reference came yeah. in early. Jim Trestle Man, coming in early. What's the time? Four minutes, 30 seconds. Jim Trestle. Jim Trestle Finally, makes it. Do Trestle we have reference. a Jim Trestle update where he's at? What's he's he doing? the president of Youngstown oh, State. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wait, right, but right. what's the book? Why and why it's, did you get him a book? It's the best I Ohio want, State football stories ever told. I want him to read. Fun fun fact: I'm a Notre Dame fan. <laughs> <laughs> that God comes, country Notre that Dame. That comes wow. with a DVD, so you can listen and watch. Oh, yeah. that's oh. great! Oh, we oh yeah, are learning so much. My Smeeds? roommate will love that. Sweet, you all right down there? You good? I'm doing great. You all ready right. to go? All right, Absolutely. this is where we put the fancy opening. This is the drill. <laughs>
bum, 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 bum. <laughs> da, 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 da. Sponsored by. Sponsored by whoever wants to get involved. Black and Dagger. Awaiting sponsors. Dagger. Awaiting That's sponsors. Right. The Sweet 16 time. All right. Yes. Every, everybody's ba- bracket is busted. Don't even mm. pretend like you, you're still alive. But the Sweet 16 is here in Los Angeles. Yeah. The big storylines coming out of the opening rounds was number 16, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Oh, but that wasn't Boston College? <laughs> no. Oh. No. No, Flutie Flakes are done. Oh, they right. knock off Virginia. <laughs> that's right. Sister Jean and Loyola oh, making a run. Sister Jean. Love Sister the Catholic yes. school boys here. Oh. I know you're all about Sister Jean. It. Go yeah. ahead, have it. Sister Jean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sister Jean. <laughs> yeah. Go yeah. You have your moment. Oh. You have your moment. I didn't. I, I didn't know there was choreography. Yeah. I didn't know we were doing that. Yeah, okay. Jean, Overall yeah. thoughts on the opening weekend. Uh, well, I, I love Loyola. I just love that story. Um, but I would think for us here locally, the story is the <laughs> and complete collapse of the Pac-12. And I mentioned to you guys, I, I'd like to just talk a second about that because yeah, right, like this a has second. A, sure. <laughs> like okay. a second. Yeah. Um, this follows just a disaster in the bowl season for the football teams, and a lot of people are looking at the Pac-12 and saying, is this really a major conference anymore, or is it slunk to mid-major? This is what I would say. It is wait, not wait, a Pac-12 a mid-major? I, well, it, they just don't win right All now. Right. Okay. Here's the in thing. In the major sports. The Pac-12 calls itself the con- Conference of Champions. Some people think that's funny. No, it's true. Bill last spring, yeah, Called last spring, the Pac-12 won its 500th national championship. The next closest is the Big Ten at about 306. So it is. The, the thing is, the Pac-12 has really been bad at two sports where you like to watch on TV. Yeah. doesn't mean that the water polo players and the lacrosse players and the women's soccer players aren't worth it. We just don't Beach watch volleyball. their shows. The, the revenue-generated sports. But here's the deal. The basketball thing is cyclical. If they can just keep some of the California kids home, which um, Steve Alford at UCLA has done, including Shaq's kid, they'll be fine. It's in football, Beto, where I think we are going to see a major change. I think the Pac-12 is going to be the first major conference affected by parents pulling their kids out of football and into lacrosse and into water polo, and that is not going to change. I think USC, as a traditional power, will still be able to field teams from every now and then. But California is the engine that drives the Pac-12. Do people even care about the Pac-12? Do people even care about conferences anymore? Uh, Because when you guys grew up and – uh, producer John or technical director John, you guys take pride in, in the Midwest about the Big Ten is right, this right. or all this other stuff right. like the conferences. But I think now with the the bowl system, we're so diluted where you don't even know who's coming to the Rose yeah, Bowl. Yeah, but here's Do why people still care about your region. Here's why it does matter because in the SEC, if you win a game, it seems like you but get that doesn't cre- ca- SEC is a different. Animal. Well, no, no, no. What but I'm saying why. is you get credit for like two that's games. Why, if yeah. you lose a game, people say, "Oh, it's the SEC." In the Pac-12, you've got to go undefeated now because it's so little thought of. And so I think I think that's going to only continue. I don't think the Pac-12 is – in fact, if anything, I think college football is becoming a regional sport. Well, look at this. The SEC, the they now have Hawaiian quarterbacks. They have Samoan yes. linemen. Mm-hmm. It used to be the good old boys from the farm right. the only kids you saw in the SEC. Right. Right. I'm from L.A. There's no way I'd want to send my kid to Tuscaloosa. No. No. Now it's you have kids at St. John Bosco who are like, hey, we're going down to see Auburn. We're going to see Georgia. Right. Well, heck, our own uh, president of Pro-Angle, uh Sports, Jeff Proctor, his son, fr- surfing in Manhattan Beach. Now he's living in Athens, Georgia, playing right. baseball. How the heck do you end out there? Yeah, because they know if you go to SEC, right, you get that's top, great. top facilities, top you money. You get your own channel. That's exactly. Everybody True. can see. Yeah. You get the revenue generated. This it's 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 such a branding thing now that the Pac-12 has lost a lot of its luster, but it remains a, a West Coast powerhouse. I mean, w- there's uh, there's nothing else. Who who's when, the West Coast powerhouse? You, the Pac-12 is always going to be the West Coast. When you're looking at all the region, of the Pac-12 is always going to represent the sure. West Coast. Yeah. No matter how good it is, it's yeah. always it's never going to be replaced on the West Coast. Yeah, I think I th- I really do think that it will continue sending out tennis champions and track champions right. and all that. And again, in basketball, great. I think it'll come around. It's a school but football, it's football. A, no, it's the Sweet 16. Of Olympics. Right. The Sweet 16 is at Staples Center. Yes. Yeah. Who's playing there? I haven't even paid attention. I know. Yeah. I know. And, and Anybody know? In years past, it, uh, you could Michigan? always count for no. UCLA and Arizona yeah. being in it, and then an Oregon or a Stanford or a Cal yeah. also being there. And it's there. not that I'm not paying attention. It's just there's nothing for me to say, hey, I want to go. 
Well, no Pac-12. It, forget about the There's NCAA. There's no Pac-12. USC played an NIT game at Galen. W- what they do? Two thousand people showed up. Why? To watch them get spanked. By why would you even Kentucky. go? Why, why would you watch an NIT game? <laughs> exactly. Unless yeah. it's free. Even yeah. if it's free, though, you go to the nine zero instead. <laughs> yeah. There's no need. Right. Yeah. yeah. Do, do I get a free towel with this or something like you that? Should. What's my need? Yeah. yeah. So anybody know who's in the Pac-12 tournament? The, I mean, West, the West bracket is Florida, Florida State, State versus Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Oh, I like okay. Zags. Yeah. Okay. And Michigan versus Texas A&M. Yeah. No, thank you. Go Zags. It yes, 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 more Catholics. Have, North Carolina should have been there, and Xavier should have been there. Yeah. They both got knocked out. Yeah. And and by the way, North Carolina got blown out. Oh, my gosh. That's the thing, like, with Virginia, th- these aren't games where it was close and someone hits no, a, a Virginia fluky got shot. Much. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was insane to see the Virginia score. Yeah. They're just done. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Sister Jean, rock on, girl. Yes. Rock on. Rock on. Rock on. As you know, she used to be a principal at St. Br- uh Stop it. Uh, a principal at an Saint elementary Bernard? in uh, Los Angeles. Way I did back not in the day. know that. Wow. Yeah, I'll find out who it was. Oh, it was wow. Cool. Yeah, so, see, I, I, I read it, t- pay attention. <laughs> I, don't, I don't go to mass, but I pay attention. I only know my prayers in Spanish. They I'm would sorry. rather you not read. That was the whole thing. It was like, <laughs> we'll, we'll take care of the reading. You guys just exactly. sit there. So right there, we do that little sound effect. <laughs> all right, the second part of the drill. Question number two, because Larry's all fired up. I'm fired up. ESPN yes. came out with a top. Tw- look at look at this guy. I am fired up. <laughs> Can fired I finish up. the topic here? No, Lowry? no, no. <gasps> and I'm trying to control my arm. Finally, go ahead. Go, <laughs> just, just take over, Lowry. Be the host. Do it all. Okay, so we. <laughs> I'm gonna get hit. As I'm one gonna. Point. All I said was ESPN top. I'm going to hear from the union. But anyways, ESPN comes up with another one of these lists. This one was to celebrate the 20th anniversary of ESPN, the magazine, and they featured the top 20 athletes that have been around in the 20 years the magazine's been around. Number one was Tiger Woods. Absolutely no argument. Number two was Peyton Manning. Number three. Peyton, number, number or number three, three Peyton LeBron Manning. Was two. LeBron was number two. <laughs> when when you're going not that it matters. When you think about <laughs> Lionel Messi, the greatest soccer player perhaps ever, was 11. Yes. That Serena Williams did not make the top 10. And for you folks in Boston, Tom Brady <laughs> was 20th. Wait, Peyton Manning, three? Yes, Tom, Tom Brady, 20? 20. And Messi at, at 11. And Lauren Jackson was in there. And Lauren Jackson was in there. Diana <laughs> Taurasi. Who the hell is Lauren Jackson? Right, and everyone recognizes <laughs> Diana Taurasi as the greatest women's Gino. basketball player of all time. Gino. Yeah. She wasn't mentioned. Now, here's my problem with this list. There's no, I have no problem. I hold on. Before on. you get on yeah. here, it's no. called The Dominant 20 by ESPN yeah. Yeah. and the 20th anniversary of the magazine, yeah. the definitive 20 for 20, the most formidable, awe-inspiring, downright dominant athletes of the past two decades in order across sports. Lauren Jackson. This is according to Full And I think Lauren Matt. Jackson is listed ahead of Messi and Ronaldo. Oh, that's them, according yeah. to ESPN. That's what yes. actually right. The, right. the headline says. Now, here's my a thing. a formula that they created. This is clickbait. Oh, yeah. Well, you got me on that. So here's the thing. I'm perfectly fine if you want to come up with the list. And you, uh, you can put whoever you want. It's a fun uh, thing to you do. You can put Freddie Patek in there. That's <laughs> great. Who? Okay. Thank you. If you just want to come up for Wait, reasons. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I like that. Because we're making notes here. No, Freddie will be mentioned in He's the He's uh, a former blog. Kansas City Royal, Kansas City, barbecue, thank you. There what will, year? There what will be a, let's, what let's, decade? Let's move on. Yeah. There will be a, there'll be a, a cheat back. sheet that we can explain back. these people yes. later on. For you Pretty California back. fans, Mike Trout is on here, but Kobe Bryant is not. That's right. Really? Yes. Yeah, yes. Kobe is not on And by the way, just if you go to it, now now we're doing their Now we're doing exactly what they want us to do. If you check out the... The, the, uh, illustrations. the illustrations. There's, there's a. W- I'm not going to say it. There's a female athlete who looks a lot like Yannick Noah, yeah. the tennis player. She's it, a it, women's golf. Another She's a women's topical golfer. reference. Stop Yannick it. Noah. So we'll, we'll explain it later. <laughs> this kid plays in the NBA. Yes. Yeah. Here's my problem with this list because ESPN does this a lot now. A lot of people do too. They rationalize the list by coming up with some bizarre algebraic equation. Well, yeah. Uh, Peyton's here and Tom's here because of X equals C equals two, three, five, eight, whatever. Sports is one of those things where you can actually <laughs> watch and objectively say that person won, that person lost, that person was better than that guy. And just because you come up with some bizarre algorithm, I- if we did that, all we'd have to do was, was punch in the coordinates to every computer and say, oh, this team won or this team. It was know- according to foolproof math, and if you click on the link, they'll tell you exactly how they came up with it. Right. They used a lot of different Which metrics. Means, yeah. Um, and yet anybody who's ever numbers can it. skew anyway. Exactly. Ask an agent, ask a baseball team as they're trying to – ask your tax accountant. Right. Try to figure things out. You can skew numbers any single situ- way. But they're doing exactly what they're doing. Tom, you used to do lists. Lists yep. are easy. They yep. get people engaging in debate. Do. Yep. They're fun it's to do. Debatable. And they get – Steve Lowry all fired up, man. And Tommy mentioned that 
that the day this comes out, what was happening on ESPN? Every talk no, show. No, every talk show was talking about it. And, and they can rip it. Yeah. And they want them to rip it they because then more people are, are coming in. Why isn't this guy in? Why is she And, of in course, what do they do? What, what's the main bear they poke? New England. Because New England sports fans are the craziest fans. You put Brady at 20. Now all of them are going to yeah. come in and watch and, and react and all that kind of crap. But Anybody from Cleveland, John? LeBron. LeBron. <laughs> it's outside of LeBron, though. From the <laughs> land. No, no Bernie Kozar made the list? No, Kozar. <laughs> Kozar. The, the pride of, of Boardman, Ohio, Bernie Kozar did not, not make the Eric, list. Eric, you okay there, Speeds? I'm happy Mike Trout's on here. But he hasn't done anything. Uh, according to this uh, wins against replacement, he has. He's like, what, number 17? 18. Mm. Mm. 18 on the list or number one in wins against replacement? Number one in my heart. And number one in your heart. <laughs> Trout, love him. Oh, I just thought they, love have, that they don't have Kershaw on there, do they? No. Nope. That's kind of interesting. This yeah. includes the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then then how did Trout well, get yeah, in there? Yeah, like, Trout, <laughs> like Trout's killing <laughs> it in the playoffs. ESPN, top 20, get them to debate, and you'll be arguing yeah. for the next five hours. Yeah. Steve Lauer was sending a bunch of emails Send about Send me this. a check because I just yeah. did exactly what you wanted me to, my overlords. Yeah. Venmo, yeah. PayPal. Don't, no, nobody has a check. <laughs> I do Jeez. Venmo. I do Venmo. No, you don't. I swear to God. Wow. Wow. That's how I send money to and my kids. <laughs> sound effect. That's how he takes care of alimony. <laughs> All right. Okay. People complain about the NFL because yes. it's Thursday night football. So yes. yeah, it's saturated. It's diluted. Exactly. Now, all of a sudden, the XFL is coming back. It's bizarre. And what else? And something called the uh, 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 American Alliance, 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 Alliance of Football. Because we got the like, football here. Yeah. XFL, and it's, collector's item. And it's Alliance. Yeah. It sounds just like some medical thing you're supposed to sign up for. It's bizarre to me that just when football seems to have peaked and heading down a little bit, now all of a sudden all these leagues apparently think that we have an insatiable appetite, which apparently we don't. We don't need Sunday night. We don't need Thursday. We don't want crappy games. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't yeah. need Sunday night? What? Huh? what? No, How do you make your Sunday money? Do you need Sunday night? Of yeah. course. How do you make your money back from that you lost <laughs> in the morning? What am I supposed to do after, one, after well, 3 o'clock in the afternoon? You what, go to dinner with your family? It's no. It's funny that you mentioned the betting because that's what uh, the guy who wants to start this league, Charlie Ebersole. Ebersole, the son of Dick Ebersole who started the XFL, Charlie does a documentary about the XFL and decides, I can do this. When they ask him. Wait, he did the ESPN 30 for 30? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they ask him, well, why are you starting a league? And normally they say, well, there's all this talent and there's this insatiable need for football, which he kind of said. But the main thing he said was, well, you know, people play fantasy football and they, they want to play fantasy football all year. So we're going to give oh. them something to to fantasize about all year. And well, I'm who's like, playing in this? I know. That's we what I was know. thinking is what know. has happened to the country that we're <laughs> that the main reason to start a business so people can put their pretend football teams. Well, this country used to make steel, and now we're doing this crap. Yeah, in the, the country has yeah. evolved. Is this digital? No, stuff. it's devolved. No, it's we're doing that because you're doing so much more. You have no, access yeah. to it. You don't need steel. You, you <laughs> what you need is your eight fantasy teams. I need steel. Well, what's coming up? For is what? This, <laughs> listen, what's coming Carbon up fiber. soon? Supreme Court's going to decide very soon on whether every state in the union can have sports betting legal. Really? So that's what's really going to change the dynamic of everything. NBA, NA, NFL, everything is going to be an open test. Yeah. So if you think Vegas, think Vegas times 50. Oh. Every state will be open into its own sports books. That court oh. case is NCAA et al. versus Chris Christie. Yeah. Um, oh, that's what New Jersey. Real, right. Yeah, Real Sports did right. a whole yeah. thing about right. it. Um, it was it's pretty interesting. Yeah, and it's going to uh, change the whole dynamic of sports in a lot of ways. Okay, yeah. quick question. But is that what um, Adam Silver, the NBA commissioner, is talking yeah. about, where you're saying you yeah. can be at a game and you can bet yes. yeah. through the NBA app or something yeah. like that? That's Eventually, and plan. all the leagues want. Really? Yeah. Uh, the NBA seems to be backtracking be, yeah. on it, and yeah. they kind of, I don't know if they're going to drop out of the lawsuit. As of now, yeah. they're not. Right. Um, I mean, but well, it they seems stand, like they all it's going to make to money. Lose. They want they want like a one percent grab of all this. They want money. a cut. Yeah. The uh, leagues all want a cut. Yeah. Is what it is. Which is which I dig. As uh, I used to work with uh, Rod Van Hook at ESPN Radio, who did the updates. Late great Rod Van Hook, yep. who would gamble on everything oh, yeah. while he's doing updates. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Rod, is it pretty cool to win. He's like, you know what the worst feeling about gambling is when you don't have a bet because they uh, just watch you a boring game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which makes sense because yeah. why else during the NCAA tournament? Why is it so huge? Right. How many guys make a pilgrimage to Vegas for that weekend? Right. That's yeah. their guy weekend because they're betting right. Right. every. Si hey, I have my own online account and I was making a bet on what's going to happen after this possession. I mean, it's only a dollar or two, but it makes a game interesting. I'm not. I don't care about don't Loyola in Miami. I don't need that. You don't. To make a game interesting? No. No. I, just, I, I no. really. I guess I grew up 
It's you don't need that. The, I've never. I mean, it only makes it better. No, maybe because when I tried to do it, I was never good at it, so I just. Well, yeah, stopped. I'm not betting the mortgage. I'm betting a dollar no, or two. But it, it, yeah. even then, a dollar to me, I, I, it, it just pisses me off, and I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm just throwing money it, away. It kind of well, makes. You want to make a bet on how long <laughs> the show lasts? <laughs> <laughs> Take the under. Um, it, it makes sense, though. How many times have you heard football players, particularly, say, you know? These people are emailing me and, and yeah. screaming at me because I what, what am I getting out of this? Well, maybe now they start now they getting will. something now out of it. A, yeah, and maybe yeah. it becomes even an inner more I just, interactive. I don't know, later. man. There's that's just a lot of weirdness. That's a slippery gonna, slope right there. Very, very, slippery, very slippery. Question. If every every state can have gambling, yep. Las Vegas is no longer the place. Yeah. What city do you think is best set up to be the the gambling, the ne- to challenge Las Vegas? I know the city I would think of. To challenge Vegas? Yeah. Mm, I mean, because well. Vegas has everything there. Vegas has everything. Actually, it's just the strip. Outside of Vegas, you don't yeah. pay attention to anything right. else. I already what know the like? city. It's got to be New Orleans. Oh. Oh, New Orleans would be fantastic. Oh. Bet- they already don't have, they have the casinos there? They kind of do, but imagine if they could do it on the scale of Vegas, oh, yeah. especially after. Uh, what a uh, Disneyland uh, place that was. Shmeed, you guys travel a lot. Where do you want to do Where would you think? I love the New Orleans idea. Ah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> We're on it. He's Don't al- say he's Youngstown. He's also from Louisiana, so there's okay. Uh, I mean, well, from well, Irvine. Well, his family's Irvine. from Louisiana, right. so he's got. I thought roots. you were Vietnamese. He's got roots. I am. It doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're. <laughs> this is the most interesting he's, producer in the world. He's right American, there. is what he is. He's an he amalgamation is, of everything. He is the melting pot. I like that. All right. So you're a, a Vietnamese New Orleans kid. I'm an Asian Cajun. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. How long have you been using that line? Wow. <laughs> little tired. Trying to get a trademark. He has like <laughs> two. I don't have any nicknames. He's got like a thousand. Yeah. It's unbelievable. All, all now quality. you know when the Asian Cajun 12 is t- uh, Asian trolling you on Twitter. Asian. That's him. <laughs> and that'll do it for the drill. Yay! Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now let's get serious, people. Use your real professional voices. LA Daily News media critic. Contributor. 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 Yeah. Contributor. He's a freelancer. He he's no longer now instead of saying buy, it'll on the byline it says just does buy. Uh no it's a for? special correspondent. Yes. Special correspondent. I'm contributor. A correspondent. I'm a contributor. It's time for the business. I'm a free agent in this yeah. business. Why are you talking over the oh, cool sorry. sound effects? It's time <laughs> for the business. Cha ching. <laughs> <laughs> money, 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 money. Tom Hopar, oh, feel free. Nice. What are you upset about today? I'm not upset about a lot, and you, and you can tell by the tone of my voice and by the oh yeah, because it changes. Voice. Yeah, um, I'm fighting a cold. That's all yeah. I'm telling you. Right, you fight the good fight. But sir. as I'm watching television while I'm fighting this cold, one of the shows that I'm really getting into lately is on CNBC, which I didn't even know existed <laughs> except for during the Olympics. So Alex Rodriguez has developed a show called Back in the Game. Wait, A Rod? A Rod. Mm-hmm. And the basis of it is A-Rod went through this life-transforming experience when he was suspended from baseball. He wanted to decide to come back and help athletes get back on their feet because he had to do the same thing with his, with his team of uh, agents and, and all his money people. So what he decided to do was seek out players who have fallen on hard times. And the first episode that's repeating right now, and I know there's going to be more coming, Joe Smith, 1983, number one NBA overall no. pick out of Maryland. Yep. Mm-hmm. 83? 80, mm-hmm. 93. 93. Okay, okay. Yeah. He played with the Lakers for a little bit. Yes, he uh, did. Yeah. Joe Beast. Yeah. So what happened to him, according to the, sh- the numbers here, he made about $18 million in the NBA. And well, he got screwed because he was supposed to sign this big contract with Yes. The, and then all of a sudden it got voided and yeah. he didn't get right, the contract. Right. So basically, of the $18 million he has, he's down to like three grand. Oh. Ooh. Lives in this huge house in Atlanta, has a recording studio in his house with all this tons of equipment. Yeah, he which, wanted to be a rapper. Which has never generated money. He has a has a fiancé who is just on his back all the time about making money. And the sad thing is just watching oh, Joe man. know that he could be a productive person in society, and he's just, he's just looks so beaten down. But right. A-Rod not only is trying to give him a financial strategy, but also pump up his ego and say it, back to being the beast that you used to right. be. So it's a really interesting transformation that A-Rod is trying to help him go through. So, hey, so is A-Rod the financial consultant he's or is he thing. like a life coach? He's everything on this thing. But does he bring in like He brings guys in from his team to say, hey, listen. His oh. advisors. Yeah, his advisors. So it's A-Rod's team is coming yeah. to help you right. and A-Rod's a hoe. Nice. Right. On CNBC, yeah. huh? Yeah. Back in the game. So back let me ask you That's something. That's a guy who's had an interesting turn of career, too, right? right? So here's A-Rod the deal. is hilarious to watch. Uh, yeah. I know we're, we're, we're not supposed to like him. Yeah. I've Why? Never, I've never had a problem with A-Rod. It's the New York A-Rod. media that's really been on yeah. him. Yeah. And, and, in fact, the New York media got on him recently by saying it was A-Rod's team that prevented 
Bob Costas from being the play-by-play guy for ESPN Sunday Night Baseball, which is going to start next week. So A-Rod was more comfortable with Matt Vaskersian as his play-by-play guy. They did right. some games together. So the New York media portrayed it as A-Rod's uh, pull a power play, and ESPN really wanted A, B, and C, including mm-hmm. Costas, and A-Rod said, no, I want Vaskersian. It wasn't a power play. It's just who he was comfortable with. Yeah. But the way the story came out was Costas would never have worked with A-Rod in the first place. If Costas was offered the job and A-Rod as the analyst, mm-hmm. Costas would, didn't want to get next to him. He's toxic. Mm. And A-Rod didn't want to work with Costas, so it was never a story. But, again, the, the, the New York, New York media baby. turns us into this whole crap I never fest understood. They, uh, they always, their criticism yeah. is that he desperately wants to be liked. Well, let me tell you, when it comes to baseball players, we could use a few more of those who actually want you to like them. Cause I really so admire well, Everybody has an opinion on yeah. A-Rod, and yeah. it's, I've talked to guys who play with him, played against yeah. him. It's you just don't know how genuine he right, is right. about it, and that's yeah. I think that's the rub. But when the you don't know does, when he's on and when he's right. off. Okay, yeah, but right. are there are there really any examples of him stabbing someone in the back? Or I, I've never heard. Not of really. That. Yeah. But he's just that guy, according to people that I've talked to, yeah. where you know you go to high school with a guy, but he just seems fake. Yeah. Right. But he re- he isn't. But there's yeah. something that yeah. you're like, yeah, like I'll go cool. have a beer with you, but I'm not. Gonna yeah. go You're going having I'm beers with guys in high school, were yeah. you? Oh, yeah. I'm not going to go pour my <laughs> hat out to A-Rod. Presidente going, bro. <laughs> but this is part of re- a- 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 A-Rod's media rehab. Yeah. This yeah. ESPN yeah, thing. Hey, you go on Dancing Fox, with the Stars. Fox it gets Sports. you going. I mean, he went, he, he's been on the Shark Tank. He's, he's, he's really created this no, he really is. rebound. But I understand what you're saying because sometimes you have to watch out for guys yeah. – who are too into their image, and maybe they have yeah. a lot of nicknames like well, Asian Cajun. <laughs> you know, you got to watch but guys like Remember, that. A-Rod also did that photo shoot where he's looking yeah. into the mirror. Right. Yeah, that's right. true. But I think he's but learned Kobe that probably like that, that wasn't a great career. Kobe, the white. The, uh, <laughs> the, the, all white in yeah, LA yeah. Times. So the yeah. other part of the business I wanted to talk yeah. about. Wait, hold on. Let me ask the question. Oh, sorry. Wow. You, got, you know what? You, 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 know you saw it, right? Hey, whatever. You saw it. Hold for it. Go ahead, bro. No, no, no. Go ahead. I need you. No, 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 man. That's cool. I'm going to be like A-Rod. I just want to be liked right here. I just want to be liked. Forget you guys. don't be like that, baby. Last time I did the business, you ran out of the room. I know. That's for Tom's tirade. Let's go. What do you got? You didn't want to be associated with this. Go ahead. I'm giving you the chance. Go ahead. Business. What's up? The other part of the business. I put a boxing glove on. NCAA tournament. We've got Jim Nance, Grant Hill, and uh, Bill Raftery as the main guys. Probably in their fourth year now. I've started lost count. I, I've lost count of it. But as I'm watching the games, and they're on, they're doing you know a lot of the big games this past tournament. And they're going to be doing more. They're going to be the main team for the final four in the final. I just don't think they've reached whatever potential it looked like they were going to reach on paper. I mean, it looked like a good idea. First of all, they replaced Clark Kellogg, who replaced Billy Packer. Kellogg was never going to make it. Right. Um, this team, it's just gotten to a point where they talk in cliches because they don't know the players anymore. Right. They base everything yeah. on onions and lingerie. The and kiss. Grant, and, and Grant Hill is just sort of plays into it, and they all have a good laugh about it. But they're not telling me anything I don't already know but that I can read before the game starts. And in college basketball, the coach is really the, the personality of the team. If they know the coach, they think they know what's going to happen in right. the game. And to me, it just I feel like this team has kind of run its course. I'm trying to think of uh, potential replacements, maybe a Reggie Miller. Mm. Maybe you bring Reggie in. to do college. Why? Uh, Reggie's doing college now. He does? For who? Yeah. For it's part of the whole March yeah. Madness TNT. Yeah. Uh, the TV. Well, that's it here. Yeah. Look, I'm in the business. You're in the right. business. Tom, if you weren't a critic, would you even pay attention to the announcers? Yeah, only because they enhance the game. Sometimes they'll make me watch a game that I don't want to watch. We've talked about Bill Walton before. There are so many people that will not watch a game if Walton's part of it. I'm mm-hmm. the, on the opposite. I would love to hear Walton just rant and go off about different things. Right. Walton, to me, is somebody who attracts me to a game. Now, if Walton was part of this NCAA tournament, there would be people that would just be hating him. Right. And I don't know if that's the attention they want. Well, let me ask you, too, because you're both involved with the media. But it's also with CBS, so you have to be a different kind of broadcaster for, for CBS. Right? Right. But let me ask you about this. It's becoming obvious that people want announcers who call it like it is, whether it's McEnroe in tennis, Johnny Miller yeah. in golf, yeah. Barkley in basketball, uh, um, uh, uh Guys on uh, and all over the NFL will say that was horrible, that was stupid, whatever. That's what Tony Romo is like. Romo. Right. right. But when you get into college, they won't do that. Why? Right. Are they specifically told, hey, these are kids, or what is it? I, I think a lot of it has to do with the analyst realizing that they're dealing, which is my opinion, with guys who aren't pros. Yeah. And they're not on that level. It's easier to rip a professional right. who's. Yeah, but then who why won't they rip the coaches? Well, I don't. Well, I See, they're they're too friendly with the coaches. They need the coaches. Yeah. A lot of them are also analysts who are trying to get their next job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. and the analysts are coaches. They're trying to get another job. Right. You can but yeah. Steve okay. Lavin besides 
Gus Johnson, who I didn't even know doesn't do college basketball anymore. Right. Does anybody know who's doing college basketball? Well, nah. Gus does it now for Fox Sports. Oh, he does only he? does big, big East regional uh, games, but th- not in the, but fun, th- all right. in the tournament. Uh, yeah, you're right. Young, young guy Eric, do you, you yes. work in the business. Yes. You know these a- analysts. Are you watching college basketball for whoever is doing play-by-play? Uh, definitely not. Right? right. John? Not really, right? Uh, no, and what I really think you're overlooking here, uh, especially with the tournament, is the – uh, bar factor, the Vegas sports book factor. Sure. That you're People not aren't hearing, hearing the audio anyway. for ninety five yeah. percent of these That's games when point. they're, when they're yeah. watching, yep. especially on the first two days when there's yep. sixteen games going right. on it's each day. Around, you're right. absolutely right. Yeah. Right. yeah. But I want a broadcaster who can set up the game, who can keep it in context and who can give me some information. I don't want an analyst who's gonna regurgitate cliches and that's all I'm asking and, and mm. I think in this case What's come up to me is that these guys are just kind of in this rut, and maybe it's time to shake it up. Can you do me a favor? With your voice the way it is, could you just say, this is Tom on KMET, and that was ha- <laughs> Court of what? the Crimson King. Dr. King. Demento. There <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. No inside jokes here. <coughs> <laughs> Only inside jokes. Don't make me laugh because it will just turn into a hacking I don't know. Oh, I, that happened at breakfast, and that yeah. was not good. No, it was yeah. not good. You guys go on your own. Now you have a cigar? <laughs> I'm sorry. What, what, what's going on here? If I'm Sometimes gonna kill a myself, cigar is I'm just gonna, a cigar. This is just yeah. This show is going off the rails here. <laughs> you guys are your own host. You don't I, need me. No, no, we need you, you have your own cigar. We need you. The business what? is the business is done. We already have a minority with an Asian cage, and you're all you need. What do you? What oh else do you need on the show? God. We need you to talk about. I'm our much friend. closer to it we than need you. Are, listen, by the way. we need to talk about Ricky Romero. Oh, Ricky uh, Romero, buddy of mine. I've been working out with him. Right. This is a great media project in itself. Yeah, I'm started off on YouTube. So this is a dude who was. First round pick was an all star in Toronto, um, and he, a few years ago he used to work out of StubHub with all these fancy millionaires, and then now he's no longer in the major leagues. People don't really pay attention to him, so he had nobody to play catch with. I decided, I'll like, hey, I'll catch for you. I can play long toss. Hell no. So <laughs> because his trainer left to go work in the, the Mexican Winter League, yeah, and now his trainer's back. So I did a couple of YouTube episodes with him. Uh, I'll tweet it out. It's also on my on Living the Dream, my, my own YouTube page where I have yeah. my highlights and stuff like that. And then we've been just working out. And then it's something as simple. You go to Aviation High in Redondo, and we long toss. And then we go down former to the beach. Former Aviation High. Former Aviation High. Then you know, go down to Redondo Beach right above the Hermosa Saloon yeah. on 2nd Street. Uh, and a couple kettlebells, a medicine ball, and just do st- simple workouts. It's, it's a great thing to watch. It's, it's a, Yeah. It's I've been, so I'll now that there's uh, his trainer's back, I've been taking pictures. I'll post yeah. it out there. And then I said a couple That's episodes awesome. on YouTube. I have, yeah. I have six episodes total, and we're following him as he's – Hopefully lands back with another team. He's had two knee surgeries, two elbow surgeries in the last four years, and <sighs> he's 33 and he's left-handed. So he's like, "Hey, yeah. I'm healthy now." Right. He's Jesse Orozco. So That's he's been. Term we'll yeah, come up with. He's yeah. been throwing four teams, yeah. but now with the col- not the collusion, but you have so many guys who played in the majors last year, yeah. right? Who are still looking for jobs. So he said, "I know my role. I haven't played in the majors in a while, but I, he's been throwing for teams. They like him, but it's also if I come back with as a scout and I bring my manager or uh, uh, the GM." A reclamation project. They're like, no, nah, come on, get out of here. So, yeah. looks like he's probably going to go independent ball. We're going to follow his trails all season long. That's a great story. East LA kid who yeah. still drives a used Lexus. So, <laughs> I mean, there it is. A- uh, but no, the last part right here yeah. of the business. It's time. Ready? You guys love this because it's the one, the only Tom's tirade. <laughs> Did I have a tirade? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's that? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here's the deal. <laughs> The Dodgers Uh, are entering their fifth season of Sportsnet (laughs) LA and the whole distribution problem. Now, I don't know if this is news or not, but I do know that our people, very mixed emotions about this. My thought in Los Angeles, growing up in Los Angeles, is the opposite of enthusiastic is apathy. It's not anger. Yes, that's right. So if people right now are at a point of apathy, does it really matter if this 25-year deal goes to its extent, and nobody right. ever sees a Dodger game anymore. So I'm trying to find if there's a news angle to this, because I want to write a column about it, because so many people do have a passionate thing about this, but there there are also as many people who are apathetic about it. And the person who should be angry about this is Joe Davis, because I've never even seen that guy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get the package. Right. I don't see it. Vin Scully was Vin Scully. It didn't matter whether people saw him or right. not. So you the last him. three years of yeah. Vin Scully's broadcasting career was gone. Was Pretty much gone. Yeah, which is basically like someone taking a bunch of whitewash and yeah. and doing over the Sistine Chapel. Right. It's just awful. But I agree with you. I don't care anymore. I just, I, it, it I, you seems know, like I don't care enough to write a column about right. it anymore. So yeah. I'm trying to figure out, do people, 
have they looped? Other people have looped in different things like sling boxes and other mm. and other MLB TV. They've they've kind of rewired certain things. Watch it through their Xbox. There's ways to get right. games on sports, and if you really really want it, I think the Dodgers are finding out that as long as it doesn't affect home attendance, yeah, they can live with it. And by the way, they got their money. They should be careful because this ain't Kansas City. Yeah. Uh, and it ain't Cleveland. There's a lot of things to do here. And if I can't get my Dodger game easily, right. I'll go do something else. I'll go watch something else. As long else. as they're successful. I'll respect. Have you seen the attendance in Cleveland? Any Anytime there's a national game for the Indians, check yeah. it out. It'll The stadium will be mostly empty. No kidding. They, they, were, they were bottom third in attendance last year. What? And that includes a 22-game win streak. So where where are they? What are they doing? What are you doing in Cleveland if you're not at an Indians game? Uh, it's really a uh, yeah, LeBron. It's, it's it's a town that probably has enough money for two teams that only has three. Wow. Yeah. So they have they're kind of spread a little thin because they won't stop supporting the Browns. Oh. <laughs> are you done? You done with your tirade? Do you need like an intervention? Yeah, that's I, that's as much energy I have for a tirade. You, you yeah. sound. I was expecting you to come out with like fire, brimstone, no, heat. Can't. Yeah. It's not because you're sick. I think you're just done. That's it. That's it. That's kind of it for me. <laughs> it really is fading right you're, before you're, your eyes. You're done with the no TV, huh? Well, you know what? I had direct TV for for a long, long time, and then the Dodgers got into their second year of this, this stalemate, this hostage situation, which I call it. I finally said, forget it. I want to get my Dodger games. But really, the deal breaker. So you do for me, watch the Dodger game? I do. I dropped Direct TV, which I hated doing. I picked up Sports. I picked up Time Warner, which was the cable system in my area. I was lucky enough to have that option. But the deal breaker for me was I wanted the Pac-12 channel, right? Which I also could not get on Direct TV. So that was it. Maybe not such I've a big thing anymore. I've never seen the Pac-12 channel. Yeah, I think most people haven't. And and they should. It's yeah. it's uh, again, it's what makes the Pac-12 a second tier conference. Right. You don't have the distribution of the Pac-12 network. Hey, talk about what was the most interesting. Oh no 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 no. First of all, no no no. <laughs> First of all, don't, how dare you do that? <laughs> not the fact that I'm the host. No no. How Good dare vacation. you, as a professional reporter? journalist trained come out and start with talk about oh <laughs> who the hell are bad. you to come off with a, a oh. talk about because if anybody else in a in a locker room situation yeah. in a press would say hey, hey talk about you yeah, would say you would roll your eyes shield. and you would get going <laughs> You know what? Who that is just lazy. By the way, with my big and you also, and, and, and even if you were having a conversation with Tom, you would say, "Hey, Tom, talk about this." If you guys oh, were no, sitting, he would. He would. oh fuck, oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> talk about what you just said. Talk about that. Um, we're trying not to go. Sorry by the way, that. who invented talk about? Because when I first lazy started people. in the business, you had actually asked a question. You right. still should ask a question, side, there, Lowry. Sideline reporters. Sideline reporters. Sideline reporters. Yeah. Reporters. Talk about football. <laughs> Anyways, at breakfast, he had a very interesting thing. Because he's sick, he's got uh, he's got big bags under his eyes, and what is the oh. cure? What did you guys talk about? We talked Here it about is. how to look good on TV when you are sick. You know when you have bags under your eyes? Do you know what you use on, on your eyes for this? Makeup. Preparation H. Preparation H. And it's, do what? It shrinks the swelling. It shrinks. doesn't matter where you put it. Wait. You went and put Preparation H on your baggy eyes. Yeah. yeah. Beca- and you wear glasses so nobody can tell I tighten on up. a YouTube show. I tighten them up, yeah. And and it made sense wow. because we said he's normally over talking, here. Out, he's normally talking out of his butt anyway. Just, so yeah, yeah, I'm usually talking. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> By the way, sh- we're at the uh, 37. Whatever. Oh, you know what's gonna happen, Eric? Rails. Eric, uh, can we get a green room for Mr. Hofarth <laughs> over here? He needs a writer. He's gonna have a makeup artist in here. Yeah, yeah. some Ray Bans. All I want is uh, throat lozenges and preparation aid. I'll be fine. <laughs> and a cigar. I'm on the it. cigar. You know, this which the reason for I'm wearing this and the cigar is a throwback to an illustration that was done by my good friend Jim Thompson, who saw the show the first couple weeks, really liked it. Yeah, I don't like to him. Contribute. <laughs> <laughs> well, he drew characters of us. Yeah. And they are no, on no, no. He drew art of you. He no. drew characters of art. Me. I look like the guy though. that ate me. <laughs> <laughs> and I look. <laughs> anyway, this is on. This is now on our blog, which is called FarthoffTheWall.com, yeah. which explains includes a cheat sheet of the show and what references we are making. There's a picture of the uh, the website. Yeah, that is terrible. We're get, we're we're syncing it up here. The the term meth addled has come up to describe <laughs> my uh, character there, which is really but fantastic. What we understand is that John and Eric are very uh, appreciative of the art. Oh, yeah. you, you guys like your descriptions, Eric? Eric looks it. Eric looks very happy to be where Eric, he is yeah. at that moment. That's I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. Well, you do appreciate the artwork if we can get uh, <laughs> another you. version. Yes. Yeah. And then another version. Something and can we I'm approve taller. it before you post it all over the yeah. media web? <laughs> Sponsored by SlimFast because when I take this thing off, I'm going to have lost 10 pounds just from the <laughs> this sweat. This show brought to you by SlimFast and Preparation H. And it's now time <laughs> for story time <laughs> with the old guys. Oh. 
What do you want to talk Sound about? effects, blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And like some old, some old some old time music like from the Roaring Twenties. <laughs> <or something. laughs> yeah. And all right, so we've done the LA Sports Arena. Yes. Uh, what else have we done? Santa Anita. Yes. yes. And a place that is jumping again. The yes. Forum in Inglewood. I never thought. For the longest time, it was a church. Right. It was forgotten yeah. after Staples Center was built. It was forgotten in 1999, yeah. early 2000s. You'd go to Hollywood Park, you're like, oh, that's where the Lakers used to play. Isn't right. Weird? Kings used to play. Yeah. Right. Did you cover games in there? Yeah, I covered the Lakers there. You were the Showtime Lakers. Uh, yeah. Wow. And, and I have that's to awesome. say that it's not a single memory, but an overall memory that before the games, sometimes and after, you would go to the Forum Club. Oh, yes. And to this day, Beto, I have never been in any place. Wait, the we, media could go in the Forum yeah, Club? Yeah, they would allow us, but only in certain areas. Because there were certain areas you weren't okay, allowed to. Okay, what's the Forum Club? It, it's literally a club right at this kind of private entrance to the Forum, and it's where all the celebrities and, and wannabe celebrities would end up. I can't, I don't think there's ever been such a collection. You mean it would end up after the game? And before the game, before. too. Oh, okay. A collection of beautiful people, both men and women. Yes. It was shocking. I mean, so, of course, the press, we, we stuck out like a sore thumb. Oh, yeah, because we were awfully dressed. Oh, my God. It, it, was, it was like going to the planet... Uh, attractive. It's just, it was just so amazing. Wait, so the forum club after a game, you could see magic in there hanging oh, out. Oh, and and Nicholson and then. Well, you could, you couldn't because they were in their private, their private room. Yeah. Oh, there was exactly. a forum club. Then yeah. there's a, a super and VIP. And then there was the magic yes. room where the yes. magic happened. <laughs> yes, exactly. I heard about that room. Yeah. But and and of course, my very first rock concert, I went to Fleetwood Mac. At uh, the forum. So that was nice. Well, too. You got to go your own way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, is that a song? Is that a song? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fleetwood Mac. All right. All right. Uh, Stevie so Nicks, is that who it is? Stevie Nicks. Yeah. Right. So when, when when I was in high school, we had friends that worked security at the forum. So the cool thing was about these guys, they would say, be at this door at 6.15. I'm going to throw the door open. If you're there, run in. I saw so many free concerts at the forum that Are way. Are you serious? Wow. It was so hilarious. God, but it's such a different time. I, concert I would never see, like, uh... Uh, Menudo. Rick James. Yeah. You saw Rick James? I saw Rick yeah. James at the forum just because of this, you know, access. But anyway. Wait, wait, wait. Tom Hofarth at Rick James? Oh, I was a super freak back then. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Elvis Costello. Unbelievable. I saw all these great acts. But that's, I mean, I grew up at the Forum. I yeah. feel like I grew up at the wait, Forum. Wait, so you would just show up and like a shady security guard would leave oh, a door not, open? Not shady. One of my friends. So shady we security guard? No, shady yeah. security guard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They, they no more friends. So, but, the, but, the, but, but even going back. I was a ball boy for the Lakers in 1975. How did you get that job? I wrote the letter. I wrote what a letter to the, the Lakers, and I said, how do I get to be a ball boy? And they said, we'll put you on the list. They called me. My mom drove me down. I dropped me off. I was a ball How boy. old were you? I was in junior high school. Are wow. you serious? This was the coolest thing My ever. My goodness. 75, who's on the team then? Well, this is, I was there for the f season when Jerry West was injured. Jerry yeah. West took me in the locker my first day, introduced me to all the players. It was just a crazy, surreal thing to think about. Elmore Smith, Connie Hawkins, uh, uh, Bill Bridges, wow, Stu yeah. Lance, Pat Riley. They're on the team. The next year they get Kareem, so then I get to meet Kareem and right. all these new guys. Kareem, of course, as his reputation was, was a big wiener. <laughs> he was a big wiener, <laughs> even to the ball boys. Yeah. But it, it was just the interesting. So I was with there with Bill Sharman for his last last year right. as a coach. As the ball boy. Lost his voice. Yeah. yeah. It was a Because you wrote a letter. Because I wrote a letter. Hear this that, is how people? You Closed people. mouths don't get fed. This is a letter. Back in the day, you could shoot an email. A letter is much more effective. And, and, and those are my favorite memories. You were uh, a Lakers ball playing, boy. That's I was playing awesome. cup ball in the hallways. We would get rolled up things of tape, and we would play, you know, cup ball and all this stuff in the hallway. Did what? you get paid for the job? No, it didn't matter. Why right. would I get paid? I mean, I, I don't got, know, labor laws? Uh, probably. <laughs> I mean, I mean the I got, 70s were so much better. I stole the shirt and a few towels, but nice. that's a, that was my payment. Of and all I, the stuff you've done in your career, I'm more, mo most impressed that you wrote a letter and yeah. you ended up I being a, a ball letter, boy. Yeah. Something as simple as that. And yeah. I, I was watching this. Simpler uh, times. I was watching this thing on the SEC channel the other night, uh, uh, Pete Maravich, the history. Oh, Pistol Pete. Yeah. Great show. And I remember when I was a Laker ball boy. The Lakers played the Hawks, and Pete Maravich was there, and I was just, I was just stunned watching him on the. Court. Were you there when he did the fake behind everything, the back? Everything. Uh, I mean, I'm watching the clips in this in this show. I'm watching clips. I go, I was there. Mm -hmm. This was insane. That's insane awesome. It was insane to watch. That yeah. is awesome. How do you Hobart? not want to be a sports writer after experience like that? Wow, that is so that's, awesome. That's that's what got cool. me in the game. You got to see 
I love <laughs> talking about the forum. And that's that's those are just my top two moments. I can give you all kinds. And of And you know they've done a fantastic job. They yeah, basically yeah. remade it into yeah. a music venue. Yeah, MSG uh, bought it. Yeah, James Dolan. Oh, and I didn't Cuff know that. Yeah, that's yeah. who. Oh, they refurbished it. That's why there's a lot of concerts there. Yeah. Instead, because remember all the concerts used to be at Staples Center. Yeah. Right. 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 It's a much better place to see a concert. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. Acoustic wise, it's yeah. better there. And they redid it. I actually saw the Eagles there. Oh, right, yeah. right, right, it yeah. opened up. Is that New Year's Eve? No, no, oh. I, I ain't got money like that. It was one of those like, <laughs> it was like middle of the summer. But the best My part, friend's gonna let you in. No, <laughs> if your friends are still working there, they are. Right, he's out of, of prison now. Yeah. So. so I saw the Eagles there, and the cool thing about watching the Eagles was they take a halftime break. They're like, all right, guys, um, we're old. We gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> You guys got 15 minutes. We'll see you back Plus here. Plus, they need their yeah. preparation aid. Yeah, and yeah I'm like, absolutely. All right, this is cool. But for me, the forum, I never went to a Laker game ever at the forum. Really? Yeah. No, because I, I wow. go to the track with my dad. Right. And then I, was, I remember the forum used to be blue. Right, right. And then it became red, right? Great Western uh -huh. took over the yeah. naming rights, and they turned it blue, which was horrible. It, the, the, the it red, used to be red. The and brick then, red was, was what it was originally. Yeah. yeah now, and then, uh, now they reverted back. I never it. saw a Laker game there. I didn't, you know, Showtime. The only time. I didn't go to Laker game until like 2005 or something you know, like that. I just remember wow. in 83, a friend of mine went to the deciding game of the NBA championship when the Lakers beat the uh, Dr. J Sixers. I was at that game. And we ran down on the um, court, and uh, people were jostling Pat Riley's wife, who was gorgeous. And so me and my friend Dominic kind of protected her for a while. Oh. Until someone said, Security guard Steve there. over oh. here. Yeah, exactly. All of a sudden, hey, I got her. It's okay. It's when okay. I, was a ball I used, boy. I used yeah. the word protect. Someone you were probably like 120 at that time. No, yeah, right? exactly. When I was a ball boy, I used to get notes from players. They say, could you take that up to the forum club and give it to this person? See? I was a freaking... Pimp. Yes, I was a pimp runner for yeah. these guys with notes. Yeah. That's a whole other show, baby. Oh, mm. I'd like to. I'd, I'd watch that show. <laughs> that, that, yeah. that, that might have to come back. And then for me, the forum was the first time I we went there. I went to watch L.A. Lasers. Lasers, right? Oh, My brother would take wow. me because they yep. had the orange soccer, yes. soccer ball, yep. Yep. indoor soccer, and they had a guy on the team named Bethel who wore number five. Oh, he played wow. for Dallas. Wow. And I'm like, wow, somebody actually <laughs> uses his name on purpose. <laughs> Good for, then I found out he's Brazilian. I'm like, I forget it. Everybody <laughs> in Brazil has that name. Did you ever see? Uh, what was it? It wasn't ice hockey. It was uh, roller hockey. No, I didn't see that. They did roller hockey at the forum. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, they did that. They did uh, tennis, 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 bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Rodeo. Rodeo. Rodeo was big there. You ever been there, John? I have. Concert. I've seen a concert there. Uh, who? The Prophets of Rage. There you yeah, go. There you go. Yeah. You have no idea who it is, Lowry. Calm down. That's They're not good. doing Rage, Rage Against the Machine, is it's, it? Um, it's Be the real. three Be original there. members of Rage Against the Machine. Look at Miles you. Miles there you go. See. You must have dated a young girl. <laughs> <laughs> with Be Real from Cypress Hill. We got and and Zach De La Rocha's part. As well. Be yeah. Real and Chuck D from Public Enemy. Ooh. Look at Lowry going okay. with faking enthusiasm. <laughs> Asian go, Cajun, you're up in the forum? Still go your own way. Yeah, that's forum. <laughs> What'd you see? Just classic Lakers. Classic. Well, must be nice. Were you about six? <laughs> yeah, how old were you when you were? Long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> when it's you were down to about 20 pounds? It was history time. <laughs> Before that's, one. We're going to have to have a meeting to have Eric say less. Exactly. Just, uh, really, just dominate. Episode three of the drills in the books. All right, so here's what you guys do. Share it on Facebook. Please. Uh, share it on YouTube. And tweet Steve Lowry 12, Tom Hofarth. Don't tweet me. I'm not, I'll be busy this week. Uh, but everybody else, let us know the feedback of what you guys like, yeah. what you don't like. As we said, every single week the show is going to progress. We're going to have the fancy graphics. We're going to have the audio. We're going to have everything going for you. Go to Farther Off the Wall. Is that right? F-A-R-T-H-E-R. -E That's the website the where Tom will have links to the entire uh, episode. And we're, we we start talking about Fleetwood Mac. And our be a cheat link. sheet. The cheat sheet's all going to yeah. be on there. So FarthoffTheWall.com. And leave and, a comment. And without a doubt, seriously, though, please give us feedback because this is your show because I think we've struck a nerve with L.A. fans yeah. because I think just talking about the forum right here, people are like, yeah, what about this, what about Everyone's that? Everyone's got a great forum story. Yeah. And give us. Yeah. We love hearing it. And, yeah. and, and give us opinion. Seriously, we're very, we're not sensitive. Um, well, Except that, too. Yeah, and, and under your eyes. And under yes. your eyes. Yeah. I'm so very sensitive. The more right you guys give us feedback of what you like, what you don't like, we're going to incorporate that. So without yeah. a doubt, thank you guys very much for producer John. No, wait, technical director John. Producer too? Wait, who's the producer? A Asian Cajun. A yeah. I don't like that name. Executive right. producer. E executive producer uh, <laughs> Steve Rangel. Don't drink his uh, Pellegrino. Don't drink his ice no. Uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Jeff technical Jeff director John, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Producer Eric? Yes. 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 Steve Lowry. Hello. Tom Hoparth. I'm Beth Duran. Thank you guys for watching episode three of The Drill. Thank you. Well, don't talk after oh, I say goodbye. Sorry. I'm right. sorry. You say goodbye. No, you say goodbye. <laughs>